Hello everyone, welcome back to AI Academy. Today, we are starting our new course on data mining. This course will give you hands-on experience with data mining, its architecture, along with its application and classification techniques and so on. We will gradually dive deeper into the world of data mining. In this video, we will cover the basics of data mining and data warehousing. Then, we will dive into online analytical processing servers are all about. Finally, we will wrap up by discussion about the latest trends in data warehousing. Let's begin the lecture by understanding data mining. It is a multidisciplinary field that combines techniques from statistics, computer science, and artificial intelligence to extract valuable insights and knowledge from large volumes of data. It is an essential component of the broader process of knowledge discovery in databases. Here is a detailed explanation of data mining. First, we will start with the definition. It is the process of analyzing large data sets to discover patterns, trends, and useful information that might not be immediately obvious. It is a key part of a process called knowledge discovery in databases. This technology helps companies uncover valuable insights and important details from massive data storage. Businesses and organizations use data mining to uncover hidden information to make better decisions, predict future trends, and gain insights that can help them succeed. Purpose of Data Extraction Data extraction, also known as data mining, is all about digging into huge sets of data to find valuable information. Imagine having tons of data that doesn't make much sense until we sort through it and pull out the useful parts. This process is like mining for knowledge hidden in the data. We have so much data available in the information industry, but it is pretty useless until we turn it into something meaningful. To do this, we need to analyze the data and extract the important bits. But extracting information is just one part of the job. There are several other steps involved, like Data cleaning helps get rid of errors and inconsistencies. Data integration means combining data from different sources. Next is data transformation, in which data is changed into a suitable format for analysis. Then comes data mining, which helps us to find patterns and insights. Pattern evaluation means assessing the significance of the found patterns. Next is data presentation in which the result is presented understandably. Once we go through all these steps, we can use the information for various applications, such as detecting fraud, analyzing markets, controlling production, and exploring scientific data. Let's discuss about data mining process. Data mining is like being a detective for data. It is about finding hidden patterns and useful information in large sets of data. To do this, it combines techniques from machine learning, statistics, and database systems. The goal is to transform raw data into understandable and valuable insights. Key steps in the data mining process. First we will start with data collection and selection. This is where we gather all the relevant data from various sources like databases, files, or even the internet. Think of it as collecting all the clues we need before starting our investigation. It is important because we need a good amount of data to find meaningful patterns. The more accurate and comprehensive our data is, the better the results will be. Next is data preprocessing. Raw data is often messy. It might have missing values, errors, or inconsistencies. Preprocessing is like cleaning and organizing our clues so they make sense. It is important because clean, consistent data leads to more accurate and reliable insights. Data transformation. This step involves converting data into a suitable format for analysis. It might include normalizing values that is, making sure all numbers are on the same scale, or aggregating data that is, summing up values for analysis. It is important because transformed data is easier to work with and leads to better analysis results. Data mining. This is the heart of the process where we use algorithms to find patterns and relationships in the data. It is like using special tools to uncover hidden clues. 
The patterns discovered here can reveal valuable insights, like trends or anomalies. While talking about pattern evaluation and interpretation, not all patterns found are useful. This step involves evaluating which patterns are significant and can provide valuable insights. It is like figuring out which clues actually help solve the case. Evaluating patterns ensures that we focus on the most important and actionable insights. Finally, visualization and reporting. Once valuable patterns are identified, they need to be presented in a clear and understandable way. This might involve creating charts, graphs, or dashboards. Good visualization helps stakeholders easily understand and act on the findings. Important points to note. Data mining is more than just finding data. The goal is to extract patterns and knowledge, not just data itself. Interdisciplinary field means data mining involves techniques from different fields like machine learning that is, teaching computers to learn from data, statistics that is, analyzing data to find trends, and database systems that is, managing and retrieving data efficiently. Automation and algorithms in which data mining can be semi-automatic or fully automatic, using sophisticated algorithms to analyze large amounts of data. Beyond the basics involves managing and updating databases, pre-processing data, considering model complexities, and more. Different names means we might hear terms like data analysis or analytics, which are often used interchangeably with data mining. Essentially, they are all about extracting valuable insights from data. Practical Applications Data mining is used in many areas, including Fraud detection that identifies unusual patterns that might indicate fraudulent activity. Market analysis means understanding customer behavior and predicting future trends. Healthcare which helps in diagnosing diseases and personalizing treatments based on patient data. Final thought. The essence of data mining is about turning vast amounts of data into actionable knowledge. It is a powerful tool that helps businesses, scientists, and organizations make informed decisions and uncover hidden opportunities. The History of Data Mining Let's take a walk through the history of data mining, breaking down how it all started and evolved over the years. Early Days 1960s and 1970s Data Fishing and Data Dredging In the 1960s, analysts and economists used terms like data fishing or data dredging to describe the practice of analyzing data without a clear hypothesis. This was often viewed critically as it seemed like searching for patterns without a proper method. Michael Lovell's Critique In 1983, economist Michael Lovell used the term data mining in a critical context, suggesting that it often masqueraded under names like experimentation or snooping when done improperly. Rise of the term 1980s and 1990s Database mining, around 1990, the term data mining began to appear positively within the database community. Before this, database mining was briefly used until it was trademarked by a company called HNC. Researchers then settled on data mining. Knowledge discovery in databases. Gregory Piatetsky Shapiro introduced the term knowledge discovery in databases during the first workshop on the topic in 1989. This term became popular in AI and machine learning circles, while data mining gained traction in business and media. Establishing the field in mid-1990s. KDD-95. The first international conference on data mining and knowledge discovery was held in 1995 in Montreal. Co-chaired by Usama Fayad and Ramasami Uthurusami, it marked a significant milestone in the field. Academic Journals and Conferences In 1996, Usama Fayad launched the journal Data Mining and Knowledge Discovery. He also started the SIGD newsletter and SIGD Explorations, solidifying the academic presence of data mining. The KDD conference became a premier event with a highly selective acceptance rate for research papers. Evolution of Techniques Early methods which includes manual data analysis has been around for centuries, 
with early methods like Bayes' theorem in the 1700s and regression analysis in the 1800s. Advances in Computing The increasing power and ubiquity of computers dramatically enhanced data collection, storage, and analysis capabilities. By the mid-20th century, methods like neural networks, cluster analysis, genetic algorithms, decision trees, and support vector machines were developed. Modern data mining includes Automated data processing As data sets grew in size and complexity, direct, hands-on analysis was increasingly supplemented by automated data processing. This allowed for the application of advanced algorithms to large datasets more efficiently. Next is, integration with AI and machine learning. Data mining bridges applied statistics and artificial intelligence, using mathematical foundations to exploit database management systems for efficient learning and discovery. This integration enables uncovering hidden patterns in large data sets. In summary, the history of data mining is a journey from early manual methods to sophisticated automated techniques, driven by advances in computing and the need to make sense of ever-growing amounts of data. It has evolved into a powerful tool that combines statistical analysis, AI, and database management to uncover valuable insights. Let's start our next topic, types of process in data mining. The data mining process, also known as knowledge discovery in databases process, involves several key stages. Selection. Preprocessing. Transformation. Data mining. Interpretation or evaluation. Flow of data mining process. Let's break down each stage in simple terms. First is, data selection. It involves choosing the relevant data needed for analysis from a larger data repository. Often, the data we have is much larger than what we need. By selecting the right data, we focus on what's necessary and useful for our analysis. Next step is, data preprocessing. It is about cleaning and preparing the raw data to make it usable. Real-world data is often messy, with missing values, errors, or inconsistencies. It fixes these issues so the data can be effectively analyzed. After that is, data transformation. This stage transforms and consolidates the clean data into a suitable format for mining. It includes steps like normalization that is, scaling data, and aggregation that is, summarizing data. Let's take an example, converting a data set like, minus 5, 37, 100, 89, 78 to minus 0 0.05, 0 0.37, 1.00, 0 0.89, 0 0.78 makes it more suitable for analysis. Properly transformed data ensures that the mining algorithms can work effectively and produce meaningful results. Next step is data mining. This is the heart of the process where sophisticated methods are applied to extract patterns from the data. While talking about, tasks involved which includes association that is, finding relationships between data, classification that is, grouping data into categories, prediction that is, forecasting future data, clustering that is, grouping similar data, and more. The data mining step reveals hidden patterns and insights that can be incredibly valuable for decision making. Interpretation or Evaluation this stage evaluates the patterns discovered during the data mining phase to identify which ones are truly useful and interesting. Not all patterns are valuable. Evaluation helps determine which patterns are useful, understandable, and reliable for making decisions or confirming hypotheses. In summary, the data mining process involves selecting the right data, cleaning and preparing it, transforming it into a usable format, applying mining techniques to discover patterns, and finally evaluating these patterns to extract meaningful insights. Each stage is crucial for turning raw data into valuable knowledge that can be used in various applications like fraud detection, market analysis, and more. Let's discuss on our new topic, the CRISP-DM process. Data mining can be understood better through cross-industry standard process for data mining framework. This methodology breaks down the process into six phases. 
Business understanding. Data understanding. Data preparation. Modeling. Evaluation. Deployment. A simplified version of these phases includes pre-processing, data mining, results validation. Let's dive into each of these phases in simple terms. First we will start with business understanding. This phase involves understanding the business problem we are trying to solve. Knowing the goals helps in defining what success looks like and guides the data mining process. Next is, data understanding. Here, we collect data and start exploring it to understand its characteristics. This helps identify any data quality issues and gives insights into what data is relevant. Data preparation. This is about cleaning and organizing the data, making it ready for analysis. Clean and well-prepared data is crucial for accurate and meaningful results. Modeling. In this phase, we apply various data mining techniques to find patterns in the data. Modeling is where the core analysis happens, revealing the hidden patterns in your data. Evaluation. We evaluate the patterns to see if they are useful and meet the business objectives. Not all patterns are valuable. Evaluation helps to identify the truly insightful patterns. Deployment. The final phase is about implementing the insights and patterns into the business processes. Deployment turns the patterns into actionable knowledge that can drive decision-making. In simplified process. Pre-processing. Data mining. Results validation. Polls conducted in 2002, 2004, 2007, and 2014 show this process is the leading methodology used by data miners. Another standard, SEMA, was also mentioned, but it was reported to be used by three to four times as many people. Reviews and comparisons, like the one by Santos in 2008, highlight the widespread preference for it. Detailed steps in the data mining process. First is, pre-processing. Before using data mining algorithms, we need to gather and clean your data. Clean and well-organized data is essential for discovering accurate patterns. Next is data mining tasks. Involves several common tasks. Anomaly detection that is, outlier detection, which helps us to identify unusual data records that might indicate errors or interesting patterns. Association rule learning that is, dependency modeling, helps finding relationships between variables, like which products are often bought together. Clustering is grouping similar data without predefined categories. Classification helps in generalizing known patterns to new data, like classifying emails as spam or not spam. Regression stands for modeling the relationships among data to predict future outcomes. Summarization that provides a concise representation of the data, often through visualization or reports. Finally, results validation. In data mining, it's crucial to validate the results to ensure they are reliable and useful. Sometimes, data mining can produce results that seem significant but are not predictive of future behavior that is, a problem known as overfitting. To prevent this we have Evaluation, use a separate test set of data to evaluate the patterns found during data mining. Compare outputs, that ensure that the patterns found can be applied to new data and still produce accurate results. If the patterns don't meet the desired standards, we may need to revisit and adjust the pre-processing and data mining steps. Once the patterns are validated, they can be interpreted and used to generate valuable insights for the business. Let's discuss on the applications of data mining. It is like a superpower that helps uncover hidden patterns and insights from large datasets. Here are some everyday examples of how it's used. We will first start with fraud detection. Let's imagine that someone in a bank trying to spot fraudulent transactions. Data mining algorithms can analyze patterns in customer transactions to detect unusual behaviors, like sudden large withdrawals or purchases in unusual locations. This helps banks prevent fraud and protect their customers. Stock market price prediction. 
For investors, predicting stock prices accurately is crucial. It can analyze historical stock data, market trends, and even social media sentiment to forecast how stock prices might change. This helps investors make informed decisions about buying or selling stocks. Customer Behavior Analysis Ever wonder how online retailers recommend products that might like? Data mining analyzes what customers buy, when they buy it, and how they navigate websites. This information helps businesses personalize marketing strategies and improve customer satisfaction. Choosing Data Mining Techniques When applying data mining, choosing the right techniques is keys. Here's how it's done. Type of data Data comes in different forms, numbers, text, images, and more. Each type requires different techniques to analyze effectively. For example, analyzing text data from customer reviews requires different methods than analyzing numerical sales data. Type of knowledge or patterns Before diving in, it is important to decide what insights we want to extract. Are we looking for patterns in customer preferences, trends in stock prices, or anomalies in financial transactions? Different algorithms specialize in finding different types of patterns. How knowledge will be used. The end goal matters. Are we using data mining to improve business decisions, enhance customer experiences, or detect fraud? The techniques chosen should align with how the insights will be applied in real-world scenarios. Real-world impact. Data mining isn't just about crunching numbers. It is about using those insights to make smarter decisions and solve real problems. By analyzing data effectively, businesses, researchers, and even governments can uncover valuable insights that drive innovation, improve efficiency, and enhance decision-making processes. In summary, it is a powerful tool that applies sophisticated algorithms to analyze data and reveal hidden patterns. Whether it's preventing fraud, predicting stock prices, or understanding customer behavior, it plays a crucial role in transforming data into actionable insights that benefit various industries and domains. The main software used for data mining in simple terms. Main data mining software are. When it comes to data mining, there are various software tools available, each offering different features and capabilities. Here are some popular ones. Wake up. It is like a Swiss army knife for data mining. It is free and open source, which means anyone, can use it and even tweak its inner workings. It offers a wide range of algorithms for tasks like classification, clustering, regression, and association rule mining. It is great for beginners and experts alike due to its user-friendly interface and powerful capabilities. NIME It is another versatile tool that is open source and free to use. It is known for its visual programming approach, where users can drag and drop nodes to create data analysis workflows without needing to write code. It supports integration with various data sources and offers a plethora of algorithms for data preprocessing, modeling, and visualization. Next is RapidMiner. It is a comprehensive platform for data science, offering both free and commercial versions. It provides a graphical interface for building data mining workflows, making it easy to pre-process data, apply machine learning algorithms, and visualize results. It supports a wide range of tasks, from predictive analytics to text mining, and is widely used in industry and academic. Our language. It is a programming language and environment specifically designed for statistical computing and graphics. It is a popular integrated development environment for R, making it easier to write and execute our code. It is renowned for its vast collection of packages and libraries dedicated to data mining, statistical modeling, and visualization. It is highly flexible and widely used in academic research and data-driven industries. SPMF It is a specialized open-source library focused on pattern mining from data. It is lightweight and efficient, designed specifically for discovering various patterns like frequent item sets, sequential patterns, and association rules. 
It is ideal for researchers and practitioners who need specialized algorithms for mining patterns in large datasets. Choosing the right software. General versus specialized. We have to decide if we need a tool with a broad range of capabilities, like Weka or RapidMiner, or one that specializes in specific tasks, like SPMF for pattern mining. Commercial versus open source. Considering our budget and the level of support you may need. Open source tools are free and community driven, while commercial tools often offer additional features and professional support. Ease of use. Look for software with an intuitive interface and user friendly features, especially if we are new to data mining. Each of these software tools has its strengths and is suited to different needs in data mining. Whether you are a researcher exploring complex patterns or a business analyst looking to optimize operations, choosing the right tool can significantly impact the efficiency and success of the data mining projects. Techniques and algorithms used in data mining. Classification, example, decision trees, neural networks. Clustering, example, k-means, hierarchical clustering. Association rule mining, example, a priori algorithm. Regression analysis. Anomaly detection. Time series analysis. Text mining and natural language processing. Challenges in data mining. Big data. Managing and analyzing large volumes of data efficiently is a significant challenge. The sheer scale of big data requires robust infrastructure, optimized algorithms, and scalable solutions to process and extract meaningful insights in a timely manner. Data quality. Ensuring data accuracy, completeness, and consistency is critical for reliable data mining results. Poor data quality can lead to incorrect conclusions, making it essential to implement rigorous data cleaning, validation, and transformation processes. Privacy and security. Protecting sensitive information and complying with regulations is paramount. Data mining often involves handling personal and confidential data, necessitating strong security measures and adherence to privacy laws to prevent data breaches and misuse. Complexity. Dealing with diverse data types, high dimensionality, and noisy data adds to the complexity of data mining. Effective techniques are needed to manage heterogeneous data sources, reduce dimensionality, and filter out noise to improve the accuracy and efficiency of data mining processes. Data mining is a powerful tool that transforms raw data into valuable insights, enabling organizations to improve decision-making, enhance operations, and gain competitive advantages. By leveraging advanced algorithms and techniques, Data mining continues to drive innovation across industries, shaping the future of how we use data to solve complex problems and create value. Let's learn about data warehousing concept. In the late 1980s, the concept of data warehousing was born. The term data warehouse was coined by William H. Inman, often called the father of data warehousing. This idea helps design a system for moving data from everyday operational systems to environments where it can be used for decision making. While talking about why data warehousing is used, it addresses several challenges, particularly the high costs associated with supporting multiple decision making environments. Without a data warehouse, there would be a lot of redundancy because each environment would need to gather, clean, and integrate the same data independently. In large organizations, different decision support environments often operate separately but still need access to the same data. This data is typically gathered, cleaned, and integrated from various long-standing operational systems. As new needs arise, new data might be pulled from data marts, which are specialized databases designed for quick access by users. Now our next topic of discussion is about how it works. A data warehouse, also known as an enterprise data warehouse, is a system for reporting and analyzing data. It is a core part of business intelligence. Data from operational systems is uploaded to the warehouse, passing through an operational data store and undergoing data cleansing to ensure quality before use. 
The process typically involves three main steps, known as ETL, extract, transform, load. Extract means raw data is pulled from various source systems into a staging database. Transform in which the data is then cleaned and integrated in an integration layer, often stored in the ODS. Load where finally, the transformed data is loaded into the data warehouse database, organized into hierarchical groups, facts, and aggregate facts. Users access this data through a structure called a star schema, which simplifies data retrieval. Let's talk about its benefits and usage. A data warehouse centralizes cleansed, transformed, and cataloged data, making it available for managers and business professionals. They use this data for tasks like data mining, online analytical processing, market research, and decision support. It also includes business intelligence tools for extracting, transforming, and loading data, and for managing and retrieving metadata. It focuses on gathering data from diverse sources for analysis and easy access, especially for end users who might need data from specialized or local databases. There are two main approaches to building a data warehouse. First is top-down approach which creates the entire data warehouse first, and then spin off data marts for specific user groups. Next is bottom-up which build data marts first and later combine them into a comprehensive data warehouse. Let's talk about its practical aspects. Data warehouses can be hosted on enterprise mainframe servers or in the cloud. Data is selectively extracted from various online transaction processing applications and other sources. William H. Inman described a data warehouse as a collection of data that is subject-oriented, integrated, time-variant, and non-volatile, supporting management's decision-making process. It is a technique for collecting and managing data from various sources to provide valuable business insights. Essentially, it is an electronic storage system designed for query and analysis. Unlike an operational database, a data warehouse is maintained differently to support historical and current decision making. It is not a product but an environment a collection of technologies and components enabling strategic data use. Let's we see its advantages over traditional databases. Data warehousing are crucial for data analysis and reporting, forming the backbone of business intelligence systems. Traditional operational databases can be slow when dealing with complex queries due to interconnected tables. In contrast, a data warehouse's design improves query response times and enhances the likelihood of accurate analytics and reporting. Let's continue our lecture by discussing about the history of data warehousing. They helps organizations understand, enhance, and improve their performance by managing vast amounts of information efficiently. As computer systems grew more complex and data volumes increased, the importance of data warehousing became clear. Interestingly, the concept of data warehousing is not entirely new. Here is a brief history. In 1960, Dartmouth and General Mills introduced the idea of dimensions and facts in data. Whereas in 1970, Nielsen created the first dimensional data marts for retail sales. Teradata Corporation launched a specialized database management system for decision support in 1983. And in late 1980s, IBM's Paul Murphy and Barry Devlin developed the business data warehouse. However, the person most often credited as the father of data warehousing is William H. Inman. His extensive writings on maintaining data warehouses and building corporate information factories have been foundational to the field. Think of a data warehouse as a powerhouse for information, receiving data from various sources and organizing it in a way that makes it easy to use. Here's a simple breakdown of how it works. Data collection that is data comes into the warehouse from multiple databases. This data can be structured which means organized in a fixed format, like spreadsheets or SQL databases. In semi-structured, they are partially organized, like JSON or XML files. Unstructured that is no specific format, like emails or social media posts. After data collection then comes data processing which means the data warehouse takes in, or inhales, the data, 
transforms it, and processes it. This transformation makes the data more useful and accessible. Users can then access the processed data through tools like SQL clients and spreadsheets. In data integration the data warehouse merges information from different sources into a single comprehensive database. This unified view allows for accurate analysis since all relevant data is in one place. Data access and analysis means with all the information combined, users can easily analyze it. This process ensures that the data is correctly handled and prepared by the data warehouse. And finally it is data mining, which is one of the key benefits of a data warehouse. By identifying patterns and trends within the data, businesses can make better decisions, leading to improved sales and higher profits. Now let's focus on types of data warehouses. First is, Enterprise Data Warehouse. Its purpose is to provide decision support across the entire organization. While talking about structure it acts as a centralized warehouse. Its benefits is to offers a uniform and organized way to represent data, helping users access and differentiate data based on various subjects or divisions. Operational Data Store its purpose is to serve as a middle ground when neither OLTP systems nor data warehouses are suitable for reporting. And its function is to frequently updated and used for regular activities like storing employee records. Data Mart Its purpose is to specifically design for particular business areas like finance or sales. While talking about structure it acts as a subdivision of the data warehouse, focusing on specific business functions. General Stages of a Data Warehouse First is Offline Operational Database. Its function is to copy the data from operational systems to a server. While talking about impact it processing, reporting, and loading this copied data can affect the performance of operational systems. Next is Offline Data Warehouse. Data is regularly updated from the operational database. The data is transformed to meet the objectives of the data warehouse. Real-time data warehouse. Data warehouses are updated in real-time during transactions. Example, when a ticket is booked in an airline or railway system, the data warehouse is immediately refreshed. Integrated data warehouse. After a transaction occurs, it is processed through the data warehouse and then integrated back into the operational system. Next topic is components of a data warehouse. A data warehouse consists of several key components, each playing a crucial role in managing and utilizing the data. Here's a detailed breakdown of these components. Load Manager Often referred to as the front component, the load manager is responsible for extracting input data from various sources and preparing it to enter the data warehouse. Then pulls data from external sources and prepares and transforms the data, ensuring it's in the correct format and structure for the warehouse. Data Warehouse Manager This component handles all operations related to managing data within the warehouse. It ensures data consistency and integrity and manages the creation of indices and views to optimize data retrieval. After adjusts the structure of the data for improved query performance. It summarizes and consolidates data to enhance query efficiency. Query Manager It is known as the back-end component, the query manager supports all operations related to user queries. Helps execute and manage user queries. It enhances query performance by optimizing data retrieval processes. End-user access tools these tools enable users to interact with the data warehouse and extract meaningful insights. Its types are Data reporting tools that generate reports based on the data in the warehouse. Query tools which allow users to perform ad hoc queries on the data. Application development tools that facilitates the creation of applications that utilize warehouse data. Executive Information System Tools that provide high-level summaries and dashboards for executives. Online Analytical Processing and Data Mining Tools that enables complex data analysis and uncover patterns and insights within the data. These components work together to ensure the data warehouse functions smoothly, 
providing users with reliable, accessible, and actionable data. Who needs a data warehouse? A data warehouse is an essential tool for a variety of users and organizations. Here's a detailed look at who benefits from a data warehouse and why. First is users who need large amounts of data. Like analysts, data scientists, and large enterprises. Because these users handle massive datasets and need a centralized system to manage and analyze this data efficiently, they allow them to store, retrieve, and manipulate large volumes of data without compromising on performance. Next is, users with complex data retrieval processes. They are like business professionals who need information from multiple sources. Because they streamline the process of obtaining and integrating information from various databases and data sources, simplifying complex data retrieval tasks. This helps users get a comprehensive view of their data. Then comes, users needing basic technology for data access. Like non-technical users, like managers and executives. Because a data warehouse provides an easy-to-use interface and basic tools for accessing and analyzing data, making it accessible to users without advanced technical skills. This democratizes data access across the organization. Users requiring an effective decision-making approach. Decision makers at all levels of an organization. With a data warehouse, users can make well-informed decisions based on accurate and timely data. It provides a structured and reliable approach to data analysis, supporting strategic planning and operational decisions. Users needing fast performance on large datasets. Like business intelligence professionals, report creators, and dashboard developers. Because they are optimized for high-speed performance, enabling quick generation of charts, grids, and reports from large datasets. This is crucial for users who need to produce timely and actionable insights. Users wanting to identify hidden patterns. Like data analysts and data miners. They support advanced analytics and data mining, helping users uncover hidden patterns, trends, and relationships within the data. This capability is vital for tasks like market analysis, customer segmentation, and predictive modeling. In summary, a data warehouse is a versatile and powerful tool that meets the needs of various users by providing efficient data storage, easy access, robust decision-making support, and advanced analytical capabilities. Let's check what is a data warehouse used for. They are essential in many industries for improving operations and decision-making. Here are some common sectors that use data warehouses and how they benefit. First we will start with airline industry. It manages flight routes and scheduling. Analyze frequent flyer programs. It also helps in crew assignment and management. And it also helps in performance analysis and resource management. Banking sector. It helps in performance analysis, market research, and also in effective management of banking operations. Then comes, healthcare sector in which it generates patient disease reports. Analyzes treatment outcomes. And help in sharing data with medical services and insurance companies. While talking about public sector. It analyzes individual health records and tax records and also helps in intelligence gathering for government purposes. Investment and insurance sector analyzes data patterns and customer trends, and also tracking market movements and fluctuations. Next is retail chain that helps in enhancing marketing and distribution processes. It promotes products and determines pricing, and track customer buying patterns and inventory. Telecommunication. It helps in implementing distribution and sales decisions. And it also promotes products and services. In hospitality industry. It estimates demand and design services and promotes campaigns and advertising. In summary, data warehouses help organizations in various industries manage, analyze, and use their data effectively to improve operations, make informed decisions, and enhance customer satisfaction. Let's see steps to implement a data warehouse. Implementing a data warehouse involves a three-pronged strategy. 
Here's a simple breakdown. First is Enterprise Strategy. This strategy speeds up data transformation and mapping. It helps quickly identify key elements like attributes, dimensions, and facts. Second is phased delivery. Implement the data warehouse in stages based on specific subject areas. It starts with crucial business processes like booking and billing. Once these are set up, integrate them with each other. Third is iterative prototyping. Develop and test the data warehouse in iterations. This approach allows for continuous improvements and adjustments based on feedback. By following these steps, we can effectively implement a data warehouse that meets our organization's needs. Let's discuss about the best practices for implementing a data warehouse. Implementing a data warehouse successfully requires careful planning and execution. Here are some best practices to follow. Plan for data consistency and integrity. Start by creating a detailed plan to ensure that the data is accurate, consistent, and reliable. This helps maintain the trustworthiness of our data warehouse. Define and integrate your data warehouse. It clearly defines the structure and scope of our data warehouse. Making sure it's well integrated with existing systems. A well-defined and integrated data warehouse ensures smooth data flow and usability. Use the right tools and follow best practices. Choose the appropriate tools for our data warehouse. Follow a structured life cycle, address data conflicts, and be open to learning from mistakes. The right tools and practices improve efficiency and effectiveness. Complement, don't replace. Use the data warehouse to complement existing reports and operational systems, not replacing them. This ensures continuity and leverages the strengths of both systems. Optimize data handling. When designing your data warehouse, ensure you're using the right tools. Avoid spending excessive time on data cleaning, extraction, and loading. Efficient data handling saves time and resources. Next is implement a training plan. Develop and execute a training plan for end users. And proper training ensures users can effectively utilize the data warehouse. Involve stakeholders and business partners. Engage all relevant stakeholders and business partners in the implementation process. Their involvement ensures the data warehouse meets the needs of all users and gains broad support. Following these best practices will help ensure a successful data warehouse implementation, leading to better data management and more informed decision making. Let's discuss about data warehouse advantages and disadvantages. First, we will start with advantages. Centralized data collection and access. Its benefit is users can gather critical data from various sources and consolidate it in one place. As a result, this makes it easier to manage and access information efficiently. Consistent cross-functional information. It provides constant information about different aspects of business performance. As a result, it supports ad hoc queries and reporting, enabling more dynamic data analysis. Next is data integration and restructuring. It allows users to integrate and reorganize data. Facilitates easier analysis and reporting, making it simpler to draw insights from the data. Time efficiency in analysis and reporting. It speeds up the process of analyzing and reporting data. Users can access important data from various sources quickly and easily, enhancing productivity. Finally, historical data for future predictions. It stores large amounts of historical data and helps users predict future trends and make informed decisions based on past data. While talking about disadvantages. First is, not suitable for unstructured data. Its drawback is data warehouses are not designed to handle unstructured data efficiently. As a result it limits the types of data that can be stored and analyzed. Next is time-consuming implementation. The process of implementing a data warehouse is lengthy. As a result there is delays in achieving the benefits and return on investment. Complexity for beginners. New users may find data warehouses difficult to use. 
so they required training and experience to navigate and utilize effectively. Rapidly outdated. Data warehouses can become outdated quickly. Continuous updates and maintenance are necessary to keep the system relevant. Difficulty in making changes. Making changes to queries, indices, data sources, schemas, and data types is challenging. Flexibility is limited, and adapting to new requirements can be cumbersome. Understanding these advantages and disadvantages can help organizations decide whether a data warehouse is the right solution for their data management and analysis needs. Let's see what the future of data warehousing is. Despite its challenges, the future of data warehousing is promising and evolving. Here are some key points about its future. First is adapting to regulatory constraints. It faces challenge like regulatory constraints that can limit the ability to combine data from various sources. Future outlook where data warehouses will need to evolve to ensure compliance while still providing effective data integration and analysis capabilities. Next is handling unstructured data. It is difficult to manage unstructured data, such as text and multimedia, poses challenges for traditional data warehouses. When we will focus on its future outlook it is shows that innovations in data warehousing will focus on accommodating and effectively analyzing unstructured data, leveraging technologies like machine learning and natural language processing. Scalability to manage growing data volumes. The volume of data generated daily continues to increase exponentially. Data warehouse systems will need to scale efficiently to handle large and growing datasets. This includes optimizing storage, processing, and retrieval capabilities. Integration with big data technologies. Traditional data warehouses may struggle with the scale and diversity of big data technologies. Integration with big data platforms and technologies will enhance the capabilities of data warehouses, enabling comprehensive data analysis across structured and unstructured data sources. Automation and AI-driven insights. Manual data management and analysis processes can be time-consuming and prone to errors. Automation and artificial intelligence will play a crucial role in data warehousing, automating routine tasks, optimizing performance, and providing advanced insights through predictive analytics and data-driven decision-making. Enhanced data security and privacy. Data security and privacy concerns are increasing with stricter regulations and growing cyber threats. Future data warehouses will prioritize robust security measures and compliance with data protection regulations, ensuring data integrity and user privacy. Real-time data processing and analytics. Traditional data warehouses often struggle with real-time data processing and analytics. Advancements in technology will enable data warehouses to support real-time data ingestion, processing, and analytics, empowering organizations to make timely decisions based on up-to-date information. In conclusion, while data warehousing faces challenges such as regulatory constraints, handling unstructured data, and scalability issues, ongoing advancements in technology and methodology promise a bright future. By embracing innovation and addressing these challenges, it will continue to be indispensable tools for organizations seeking to harness the power of data for strategic decision-making and competitive advantage. Data Warehouse Tools Overview and Types It plays a crucial role in managing, analyzing, and extracting insights from large volumes of data stored in data warehouses. Here is an overview of these tools and their types. Overview of Data Warehouse Tools It encompasses a wide range of software and technologies designed to facilitate the creation, management, and utilization of data warehouses. These tools enable organizations to integrate data from multiple sources, transform it into a structured format, and provide mechanisms for querying, reporting, and analyzing the data. Let's continue our lecture discussing on types of data warehouse tools. First we will start with ETL that is, Extract, Transform, Load, Tools. It facilitates the extraction of data from various source systems, transformation of data into a consistent format, and loading of data into the data warehouse. It has a feature like workflow orchestration, 
data cleansing, data transformation, and integration with various data sources. Data Integration Tools These tools focus on integrating data from disparate sources into the data warehouse. Its support for data synchronization, data quality management, data migration, and real-time data integration. Next is Query and Reporting Tools. It enables users to interact with the data warehouse, run ad hoc queries, and generate reports. It has features like SQL querying capabilities, visualization tools, report generation, and dashboard creation. Then comes online analytical processing tools. These tools provide multidimensional analysis of data stored in the data warehouse. It supports for slicing and dicing data, drill down capabilities, and advanced analytics such as data mining and forecasting. Data modeling tools. It assists in designing the structure of the data warehouse, including defining schemas, relationships, and metadata. It has feature like entity relationship modeling, schema design, data dictionary management, and visualization of data models. Data governance and metadata management tools. These tools focus on managing data governance policies, ensuring data quality, and maintaining metadata. It has features like metadata repository management, data lineage tracking, data stewardship, and compliance management. Data virtualization tools. It provides a layer of abstraction over disparate data sources, allowing real-time access and integration without physically moving data. Virtual data integration, federation of data sources, caching mechanisms, and performance optimization are the main features. Choosing the right data warehouse tools. Selecting the appropriate data warehouse tools depends on various factors such as organizational needs, data volume and complexity, integration requirements, scalability, and budget constraints. It is essential to evaluate each tool's features, compatibility with existing systems, vendor support, and the overall fit with your data warehousing strategy. In conclusion, leveraging the right combination of data warehouse tools enables organizations to effectively manage their data assets, derive actionable insights, and drive informed decision-making to gain a competitive edge in today's data-driven world. Let's continue our discussion on the new topic, an online analytical processing, OLAP. This server uses multidimensional data models. This sounds complicated, but it just means it organizes data in a way that makes it easy to analyze from different perspectives. Managers and analysts love it because it lets them quickly dive deep into data, exploring it interactively and consistently to find valuable insights. In this discussion, we will cover following topics. Its types. How to perform various operations. The differences between online analytical processing, statistical databases, and online transaction processing. So let us first discuss the types of online analytical processing servers. It comes in four main types, each with its own unique approach to handling data. Let's take a closer look at each one. Relational OLAP. Multidimensional OLAP. Hybrid OLAP. Specialized SQL servers. Now let's discuss one by one, First we will start with relational online analytical processing. It is a way to analyze data that is stored in a relational database, like the tables with rows and columns we see in a data warehouse. Let's see how does it work. When we talk about data storage. Data is stored in a relational database. When we need to see the data in a multidimensional format, it dynamically creates these views. This means it generates the views on the fly rather than having them pre-calculated. To make this happen, a semantic layer of metadata maps the relational data into dimensions. This layer also helps with aggregating the data. When an analytical request comes in, the engine runs complex queries on the relational database to fetch and format the data into a multidimensional view. Let's check why we use Rolap. Handles large data volumes which is great for managing and analyzing large datasets. Supports larger user groups which is ideal for big departments or enterprises needing extensive data analysis. 
if we talk about how Rollapp fits in. The servers sit between the relational database that is back-end and the user's analysis tools that are front-end. They use or extend the relational database management system and include features like aggregation navigation logic which helps to navigate and summarize data. DBMS optimization which means tailored optimization for different DBMS backends. Additional tools and services which enhances functionality and performance. Before going into the other important topic, first let's check its advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of Rollapp. Easily integrates. Stores data efficiently. Pre-calculated data cubes. Now see its disadvantages. Query performance. Scalability limitations. Let's discuss about what is MOLOP. It stands for Multidimensional Online Analytical Processing. It is a method for analyzing data that stores the data in specialized, multidimensional databases. Let's see how does it work. Data is stored in multidimensional databases. These databases are built using proprietary software systems. The data in these databases is pre-calculated and pre-aggregated into multidimensional cubes. This means that the data is already summarized and ready for quick access. Its engine sits in the application layer and provides users with fast access to this pre-calculated data. When a user requests data, the system can quickly retrieve it because all the heavy lifting has already been done. While talking about key characteristics. Multidimensional cubes that is data is stored in multidimensional cubes rather than in relational tables. Uses proprietary formats and software for data storage and management. Fast data retrieval it is because of the data is pre-calculated, queries are answered very quickly. Sparse data handling that uses techniques like sparse matrix technology to manage and store sparse datasets efficiently. The engine in the application layer collects data from the databases in the data layer. It then loads data cubes into the multi-dimensional databases. When the user makes a query, data will move in a propriety format from the MDDBs to the client desktop in the presentation layer. This enables users to view data in multiple dimensions. While talking about its advantages. Allows for the fastest indexing to pre-computed, summarized data. Efficient for slicing and dicing that is it is built for quick data retrieval, especially for operations that involve breaking down data into smaller parts. Handles complex calculations easily since these are pre-generated when the data cube is created. User-friendly that is it's suitable for users who need to analyze large and less defined datasets and is easier for inexperienced users. Next are its disadvantages. Limited detail that is it is not capable of containing detailed data. Low storage utilization is also one of its disadvantages. If we talk about key differences between Rollapp and Mollap. Rollapp means relational online analytical processing. Whereas Mollap is multidimensional online analytical processing. In case of data storage, data is fetched directly from the main warehouse in relational tables and uses relational tables in Rollapp. Whereas data is stored in proprietary MDDBs in case of Mollap. While talking about data structure Rollapp uses relational table. It also handles large volumes of data and uses complex SQL queries to fetch data. It is slower because it creates views dynamically whereas in case of Mollop deals with summarized data in MDDBs. It retrieves pre-calculated data cubes quickly and it is faster because it uses pre-stored views. Now let's us learn about Holap. It is a blend of relational OLAP and multidimensional OLAP. It was created to combine the large data capacity of Rollap with the fast processing capabilities of MOLAP. How does it work? It uses combines technologies that is both technologies. It stores data in both a relational database and a multidimensional database, using whichever is best for the task at hand. While talking about data storage it uses relational database for processing large amounts of data. For more specific, in-depth analysis, 
it uses the multidimensional database. Materializing cells that allows users to save the results of their queries in the MDDB. This means that once data is retrieved, it doesn't have to be fetched again, saving time but using more storage space. Users must balance performance needs with storage capacity. Let's discuss some of its key characteristics. Flexibility is one of the key characteristics that it can use either Rollapp or Mollapp based on what's most efficient for the specific analysis. While speaking about performance and storage it offers fast performance like Mollup for summary data while maintaining the ability to handle large datasets like Rollapp. Scalability that provides the scalability of Rollapp and the speed of Mollup by leveraging Cube technology for fast summaries and drilling down into detailed relational data when needed. If we talk about its advantages. Best of both worlds that is combines the strengths of both. It provides faster performance uses cube technology for quick summary information. Scalability is one of its advantages. It can manage large volumes of detailed information. And it provide efficient data handling that is it stores summary data separately in the Mollup store for better performance. Now knowing about how it fits in. Its servers sit between the user and the databases, deciding the best way to process and store data for optimal performance. They ensure that summary data is quickly accessible while detailed data remains manageable and scalable. In summary, it offers the flexibility and scalability needed for large datasets with the fast performance required for quick data analysis. This makes it an increasingly preferred choice for combining the best features of both. Now our next topic is about what are specialized SQL servers. They are designed to handle advanced SQL queries specifically for star and snowflake schemas in a read-only environment. Some of its key features are. Advanced query language is one of its key features. They provide enhanced query language capabilities to efficiently process complex SQL queries. Next is query processing that is optimized to handle and process queries over star and snowflake schemas, which are common in data warehousing. Let's discuss about OLAP operations. It is a multidimensional view of data to perform various operations. These operations allow users to interact with and analyze data from multiple perspectives. Here is the list of OLAP operations. First is Roll up. Next is drill down. Then comes slice and dice. And finally pivot that is, rotate. Let's discuss one by one. Roll up. It is an OLAP operation that aggregates data in a data cube. It does this in two main ways. Climbing up a concept hierarchy is the first way. This involves moving up levels in a hierarchy of data. For example, we might start with detailed data at the street level, and then aggregate it to the city level, next to the province level and finally to the country level. Next is, dimension reduction. This method simplifies the data by removing one or more dimensions from the data cube. How Rollup Works Climbing up the hierarchy. Let's say our data hierarchy is street, city, country. Initially, we have detailed data at the street level. After rollup, the data is aggregated to the city level and finally to the country level. As a result, instead of detailed data for each street, we get summarized data for each city, and further up, for each country. Grouping data in which data is rolled up, it is grouped into higher levels of the hierarchy. For example, street-level data is grouped into cities, and city-level data is grouped into countries. Dimension reduction, during roll-up, one or more dimensions may be removed from the data cube to simplify the data further. In summary, Rollup helps in summarizing and aggregating data to higher levels in a hierarchy, providing a more general overview by reducing details and dimensions. Let's understand with the example. Let's consider a sales data cube with a hierarchy for the location dimension. Initial hierarchy levels. Street. City. Country. Initial data cube. Here street is MG Road and Maple Street whereas city is Bangalore, 
Toronto and country is India and Canada. Roll-up operation. Aggregating from street to city. When we perform a roll-up operation, we aggregate data from the street level to the city level. Roll-up operation. Aggregating from city to country. Finally, we roll up from the city level to the country level. Next is drill down. It is the opposite of roll up. It makes data more detailed by either stepping down a hierarchy or adding new dimensions. Here's how it works. Stepping down a concept hierarchy is moving from a higher level of data to a more detailed level. For example, from quarters to months. Introducing a new dimension means adding a new dimension to the data to get more details. How drill down works. For stepping down the hierarchy. Let's imagine our time data hierarchy is day, month, quarter, year. Initially, we have data summarized at the quarter level. After drill down, the data is broken down to the month level. As a result, instead of seeing overall data for each quarter, now we can see detailed data for each month within that quarter. Adding dimensions. Drill down can also be performed by adding one or more dimensions to the data cube, making the data more detailed and specific. Navigating to detailed data which means drill down moves from less detailed data to more detailed data, providing deeper insights. Example, drill down operation. Let's consider a sales data cube with a hierarchy for the time dimension. Initial hierarchy levels. Year. Quarter. Month. Day. Initial data cube is. Drill down operation, from quarter to month. When we perform a drill down operation, we move from the quarter level to the more detailed month level. Drill down operation, from month to day. Further drilling down, we move from the month level to the more detailed day level. Diagram illustration. Initial hierarchy. Year to quarter to month to day. Drill down steps. From year to quarter. From quarter to month. From month to day. Slice operation. The slice operation selects a specific dimension from the data cube to create a new subcube. Example. Here there is time, location product, and sales. Slice by time dimension. If we slice by the time dimension with the criterion Q1, first quarter, it forms a new subcube that includes only the data for the first quarter. Sliced data cube. In summary, the slice operation creates a focused subcube for specific analysis by selecting data based on a single dimension, such as the time dimension in this example. This allows for targeted examination of data for a specific period, like the first quarter, Q1. Dice operation. It selects two or more dimensions from a data cube to create a new subcube. This provides a more specific and detailed view of the data. How dice works. Selection criteria. Dice filters data based on multiple dimensions. Example criteria. Location, Toronto or Vancouver. Time, Q1, first quarter, or Q2 second quarter. Item, mobile or modem. Result. A new subcube is formed that includes only the data matching these criteria. Diagram illustration. Initial data cube. Diced data cube, location, Toronto or Kathmandu, time, Q1 or Q2, item, mobile or modem. The result is shown. In summary, the DICE operation filters data based on multiple dimensions, creating a new subcube that includes only the specified data. This enables more focused analysis of specific criteria. Pivot operation. It also known as rotation, changes the orientation of the data axes. This helps view the data from different perspectives and provides an alternative presentation. How pivot works. Rotating data axes. The pivot operation rearranges the data dimensions, allowing you to see the data from various angles. Example, 
we can switch rows and columns to get a different view of the data, such as changing from viewing sales by region and product to viewing sales by product and region. Diagram illustration. Imagine we have sales data organized by region and product. After performing a pivot operation to switch region and product, the data looks like this. Summary. Pivot operation. Rearranges the data dimensions to offer different views, making it possible to analyze the data from various perspectives. Dice operation. Filters data to create a specific subcube based on multiple dimensions. By using these operations, you can explore and analyze your data more effectively. Understanding OLTP, Online Transaction Processing. It is a class of software that supports transaction-oriented applications, particularly on the internet. The systems are designed to manage and process a large number of short online transactions quickly and efficiently. Key Uses of OLTP Systems Order Entry which manages and processing customer orders. Financial transactions meaning handling transactions like bank deposits, withdrawals, and transfers. Customer Relationship Management, CRM, which manages customer data and interactions. Retail Sales that processes sales transactions in retail environments. Characteristics of OLTP Systems High user volume in which systems support a large number of users simultaneously. Short transactions. Each transaction is quick, involving simple database queries. Fast response times. OLTP systems are designed to provide sub-second response times to ensure a smooth user experience. Minimal data return. The queries typically return only a few records, keeping the data transactions concise. The comparison between OLAP that is, Online Analytical Processing, and OLTP that is, Online Transaction Processing. Online Analytical Processing is designed for data analysis and complex queries whereas Online Transaction Processing is designed for managing day-to-day -day transactional data. While talking about data type and query complexity OLAP has historical data and large volumes of data. It deals with complex queries with multiple joins, aggregations, and calculations whereas OLTP deals with current, transactional data and deals with simple queries with quick execution times. OLAP, read intensive, mostly select statements. Typically take longer, optimized for query performance, denormalize data structures, often in the form of data cubes and takes larger volume of data whereas OLTP write intensive, including insert, update, delete, and select. Take sub-second response times. Highly normalized data structures and take smaller volumes of data. While talking about data storage and data operations, OLAP uses data warehouses, multidimensional databases. Aggregates, drill down, slicing, dicing, pivoting. Low to moderate volume of complex transactions ID is done. Users are analysts, data scientists, decision makers whereas in case of OLTP, IT uses relational databases. Data operation is insert, update, delete, select and uses high volume of simple transactions. Clerks, cashiers, data entry operators are the users. When it comes to concurrency and data integrity it supports fewer concurrent users and less frequent updates, focus on read consistency. When we take example of application it is business intelligence, reporting, data mining. Whereas in case of OLTP supports thousands of concurrent users. Uses high emphasis on maintaining data integrity and ACID properties. Example of application is online banking, order entry, customer relationship management. Let's see the difference in performance optimization, data updates, usage frequency, focus and architecture. Starting with performance optimization in which indexing, materialized views, OLAP cubes is there. Periodic updates, example, nightly ETL processes, are done. Less frequent, used for strategic decision making. 
It focuses on analyzing trends and patterns over time and typically uses star or snowflake schemas in data warehouses whereas in OLTP indexing, transaction logs, real-time processing. It shows continuous real-time updates. It is very frequent, used for daily operations. Manages and records individual transactions. Typically uses entity relationship models in relational databases uses as architecture. In summary, OLAP systems are optimized for complex analytical queries and are used for strategic decision making, whereas OLTP systems are optimized for managing day-to-day -day transactional data and are essential for operational processes. Let's us discuss one more important topic in data mining that is trends in data warehousing before going into deep let's revise about data warehousing. It is a system used to collect and manage large volumes of data from various sources, both internal and external. This data is gathered, stored, and analyzed to support business decision making. Let's see the key components of data warehousing. First we will start with collection of corporate information. Data warehousing involves gathering data from different operational systems within the company as well as from external sources. This collection aims to create a comprehensive repository of information that can be used for analysis and reporting. While talking about its purpose, the primary goal is to aid in business decision making. By consolidating data, the warehouse allows for in depth analysis and reporting at various levels of detail. Now let's discuss about ETL process. First is extraction where data is extracted from various operational systems and external sources. Then comes transformation, where the extracted data is transformed into a consistent format suitable for analysis. Finally, loading in which the transformed data is then loaded into the data warehouse. Next point of discussion is data stores and models. Data stores are storage components within the data warehouse where data is saved. Conceptual models are the outline the high-level structure and organization of the data. Logical models detail the logical structure of the data, including tables, columns, and relationships. Physical models is the one that describes the physical storage of the data, such as databases and servers. Mapping data Creating a data warehouse involves mapping data from source systems to target systems within the warehouse. This mapping process ensures that data is accurately transferred and transformed as required. While talking about metadata repository. This is a central storage location for metadata, which includes information about data sources, transformations, and storage structures. The metadata repository helps manage and document the data warehouse environment. Finally, comprehensive source of information. The data warehouse serves as a single, comprehensive source of both current and historical data. This unified data source supports thorough analysis and informed decision-making across the organization. Let's check the benefits of data warehousing. Enhanced decision-making is one of the benefits of data warehousing. By providing access to consolidated and reliable data, a data warehouse supports better business decisions. Improved data quality. The ETL process ensures that data is cleaned and transformed into a consistent format, enhancing its quality. Historical data analysis is the ability to store historical data allows businesses to track changes over time and perform trend analysis. Finally scalability which means data warehouses is designed to handle large volumes of data, making them suitable for growing businesses. Let's see the diagram of data warehousing process. First is operational data that is, sources, in which data is collected from various operational systems and external sources. Next is transformation that is, ETL process in which the extracted data is transformed into a consistent format suitable for analysis. Data warehouse which is the storage, where the transformed data is loaded into the data warehouse, providing a single, comprehensive source of information. By following these steps and incorporating these components, a data warehouse effectively supports business goals and end-user information needs, enabling informed decision-making and strategic planning. 
it is important to understand the relationship between data mining and data warehousing. Let's discuss in detail. First we will start with understanding the basics. While talking about data warehousing this is all about gathering and organizing data from different sources into one central database. Think of it as creating a giant storage room where all our data is neatly arranged and easily accessible. While in data mining once the data is stored in the data warehouse, data mining comes into play. This is the process of digging through that organized data to find useful insights and patterns. It is like sifting through a treasure chest to find valuable gems. How they work together. Data warehousing is the first step. We need to have all our data in one place, properly organized, before you can start extracting valuable information from it. Data mining relies on the structured data in the warehouse to uncover trends, patterns, and insights that can help make informed business decisions. Diagram to show the relation between data mining and data warehousing and how they work together. Now let's see why data warehousing became popular. In recent years, it has become a common practice among businesses. Here are some reasons why companies have embraced it. Intense competition and deregulation is one of the reasons. Industries like telecommunications and utilities faced deregulation, which increased competition and drove the need for better data management. Improving internal processes comes next. Companies realized that organizing their data could help streamline their internal operations and make them more efficient. Next point is customized marketing. By analyzing data, businesses can tailor their marketing strategies to better meet the needs of their customers. Early adopters. Telecommunications, banking, and retail was some of the first industries to jump on the data warehousing bandwagon. Retailers, in particular, needed data warehousing to keep up with fierce competition. With deregulation, utility companies also began using data warehousing to stay competitive. Expansion to other industries. After the initial wave, many other sectors saw the benefits of data warehousing and adopted it. These include Financial services Healthcare Insurance Manufacturing pharmaceuticals, transportation and distribution. Now, data warehouses are used across almost every industry we can think of. They have become essential for managing data effectively in making smart, data-driven decisions. In summary, data warehousing is about storing and organizing data, while data mining is about extracting useful information from that stored data. Both processes are crucial and work hand-in-hand -hand to help businesses leverage their data effectively. Let's discuss about trends in data warehousing. The latest trends in data warehousing. First we will start with data explosion in enterprises. With mobile devices, social media, and other sources generating tons of data, companies need more powerful data warehouses. IT teams are adding new features to data warehouses to handle this massive influx of new data types faster. Next is cost reduction through consolidation. Growing data warehouses are being consolidated using virtualization, compression, multi-tenant databases, and powerful servers. This helps reduce costs by handling larger data volumes and workloads more efficiently. Hadoop for optimization. Hadoop with its distributed file system and parallel processing, excels at handling very large datasets. It managers use it to manage some of the heaviest workloads, optimizing their environments. Real-time analytics for better marketing. They are crucial for customer experience strategies by providing a comprehensive view of the customer. This data helps in sentiment analysis, personalization, marketing automation, sales, and customer service. Next is engineered systems for large-scale management. Systems like Oracle Big Data Appliance are pre-configured and optimized for specific workloads. These systems deliver high performance without the usual integration and configuration headaches. On-demand analytics for rapid prototyping come next. The features like Oracle Database 12 CS Pluggable Database allow for easy creation of sandbox environments. 
administrators can quickly set up platforms for new analytics projects, meeting the growing demand for rapid information discovery. When we talk about data compression for higher volume analytics, advanced compression methods like Oracle's hybrid columnar compression are being used. Compression allows companies to capture and store more valuable data, countering non-stop data growth. In database analytics, it now comes with tools like native SQL, our language integration, and data mining algorithms. These tools simplify data analysis by minimizing the need to move data between systems. In-memory technologies. In-memory database architecture processes large data sets in system RAM. This significantly speeds up number crunching and reporting, delivering faster actionable information. When it comes to growing importance of data warehouses, they are more critical than ever, storing essential customer and business performance data. Companies use them to improve operations and make smarter decisions. Private cloud consolidation. Companies are moving standalone servers into private clouds. This allows for flexible and cost-effective expansion or contraction of database capacity based on workload needs. Accessibility of business analytics. Integrated platforms are now available for various types of analytic applications. These platforms support executives, managers, business analysts, and even external partners and customers. In big data integration. Enterprises are capturing and analyzing all types of data, including unstructured and semi-structured data. This provides deeper insights into market trends, business opportunities, and other crucial aspects, enhancing efficiency and competitiveness. Improved performance with flash and drum. Modern hardware platforms use server memory and flash to manage data. This reduces latency and improves performance for large queries. High availability for critical data warehousing. Data warehousing workloads are becoming mission critical. Enterprises are deploying high availability solutions to ensure continuous access to information, even during outages. These trends highlight how data warehousing is evolving to meet the growing demands of modern businesses, providing faster, more efficient, and more reliable ways to manage and analyze vast amounts of data. Let's discuss about significant trends in data warehousing. In the next few years, data warehousing is expected to grow significantly, especially in the following areas. Optimizing queries. Improvements will make data retrieval faster and more efficient. This means quicker access to important data for analysis. Indexing very large tables. Better indexing methods will be developed. This allows for faster searching and sorting of massive datasets. Next is enhancing structured query language, SQL. SQL, the language used to interact with databases, will be improved. Enhanced SQL will make it easier and more efficient to manage and query data. Then comes, improving data compression methods. New techniques will be introduced to compress data more effectively. This saves storage space and speeds up data processing. Expanding dimensional modeling. Dimensional modeling, a technique for designing databases, will evolve. It helps in organizing data in a way that's easy to understand and use for analysis. Real-time data warehousing. It will start to handle real-time data updates. Businesses can make decisions based on the most current information available. Data visualization. Tools for visualizing data will become more advanced. Better visualization tools make it easier to understand complex data. Next is parallel processing software implementation. Software that allows multiple processes to run simultaneously will be integrated into data warehouse appliances. This increases the speed and efficiency of data processing. Finally, multidimensional analysis and predictive analytics. Advanced techniques for analyzing data from multiple perspectives and predicting future trends will be developed. This provides deeper insights and helps businesses forecast outcomes more accurately. A data warehouse is designed to help businesses make better decisions by consolidating, analyzing, 
and reporting data at various levels. Data warehousing involves organizing data into a common database, while data mining is the process of extracting useful information from that database. Finally, we will conclude today's lecture by discussing on major trends in data mining. First is datafication of the enterprise. More aspects of business operations are being converted into data. This provides more data for analysis, leading to better insights. Next is open source Hadoop program. With its distributed file system, HDFS, is being widely adopted. It excels at processing very large datasets. On-demand analytics environment. Environments that allow for quick prototyping and data discovery are becoming more popular. This flexibility helps businesses adapt quickly to changing data needs. In database analytics and in-memory technologies. Analytics tools that operate directly within the database and use system RAM for processing are emerging. These technologies speed up data analysis and reduce the need to move data between systems. Use of Flash and DROM for better performance. Modern hardware platforms use ultra-fast memory to manage data. This reduces latency and improves performance, especially for large queries. These trends highlight the evolving landscape of data warehousing and data mining, where advancements in technology continuously improve the ways businesses can collect, store, and analyze data to drive better decisions. In summary, this lecture covered the following topics such as Introduction to data mining Understanding the concept of data warehousing An online analytical processing, OLAP and finally concluded with trends in data warehousing. In our next video we will see in details about application in data warehousing, its architecture and many more. Stay tuned for the next lecture, where we will continue our journey through data mining courses. If you want any other topic to cover, please let us know. If you have any queries related to this lecture, you can ask in the comment box, we will try to clear all your doubts. We hope that you have found this course informative. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more information on data mining content. Your support is really important to us and it encourages us to make more educational stuff for you.